in this nitty gritty basics let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at i love maj today's topic is tile efficiency we're going to talk about strategy by wall but also playing consecutive hands because of the tile efficiency and i'll tell you more about it in a little bit first i just want to say thank you for watching my videos thank you for sharing about my channel and we're doing something a little new today as a test we're opening up the live stream chat to subscribers so if you are uh, familiar with my live streams before today and most of the times in those live streams i've had the live stream chat set to channel members only and that was because primarily trolls were bombarding us with inappropriate comments and it was very difficult to manage so we went to a members only live stream chat anybody could watch for free of course but channel members were able to chat through having a paid membership on my channel and i'm very grateful for the support of course now we haven't been visited by trolls lately so we're going to try live stream chat for subscribers if you're not a subscriber click subscribe there's a 10 minute timer on it so you may need to wait for 10 minutes before you can chat but you should be able to chat and if there are any challenges we do have moderators thank you moderators for being here they'll be able to help moderate the chat just in case we're visited by trolls. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can get started on today's topic. Also, uh, let's see. Okay, everything, everything looks good. We're gonna, I'm gonna share my screen and we'll get started with the presentation. It's fairly short and that'll give us a lot of time for gameplay with commentary. So here we go. Hi, Sue. Welcome. All right. So we're going to talk about tile efficiency. Tile efficiency is a technique in hand development. It's an option. And with hand development, the whole process would be to begin with targeting the strength of your hand. And the strength of your hand is going to be either multiples or a predominant pattern. And just based on the design of the game, American Mahjong is a game of multiples. So if you target multiples, you're going to set yourself up for success. And we'll be talking about that as we go. If you don't have multiples, you want to target the predominant pattern, which will be using tiles in your hand that will fit a category on the card. Then you're going to be gathering tiles through the Charleston, which is the pregame hand development accelerator. And you're going to either fill gaps or just build out whatever category you've chosen to play. You want to gather tiles that can be used in that category. And then you want to build your multiples. Eventually, you're going to have to build up. Once all the gaps are filled, then you build up because most of the hands use Pung Kong as opposed to just singles and pairs. And of course, all along the way, you're gonna defend. You wanna play defensively because you have opponents at the table who are vying for the same tiles. And the first player to complete a hand, of course, is the winner. Tile efficiency is a hand development technique that applies when playing any hand with components that form a consecutive pattern. The power of tile efficiency is agility. You can move very quickly between categories and hands because of the nature of runs. And incidentally, consecutive run hands are not just in the consecutive run category. They're in other categories on the card. And we're gonna look at a couple of examples. We want to talk first, though, about what is tile efficiency? What does that even mean? When you look at all the tiles that are in the game, there are three numbered suits, one through nine. 
because there are three numbered suits, one through nine, they're plentiful, more plentiful compared to winds and dragons because winds and dragons, there are only seven. So even if you compare winds and dragons to one suit, it's still short one tile, but we don't have one suit. We have three. And that is why working with number tiles is has far more options. And if you think about consecutive runs, we have efficiency, tile efficiency. Working with number tiles can optimize the process of hand development. Hands that use blocks of number tiles in the sequence are powerful because they use up to five numbers in a range. There are no nine number runs just because we have with the with American Mahjong, it's a game of multiples. So they're using single pair Pung Kong, maybe even a quint here and there. There are three hands this year. So we're not always going to have a full nine number range. There is one hand this year that uses seven numbers, and that's in the single and pair category, second hand from the bottom. But for the most part, the hands can be up to five numbers in a range. We have the first hand in consecutive run and the fourth hand down. Those three hands, because the first one we have two options, those have a five number range. All the other hands throughout the card and within that category are two, three, and four numbers. So one guideline that I share when I teach the game is that you want to gather four or five numbers in a range around the strength of your hand. The strength of your hand is going to be the multiples if you have them. And if you don't, it'll be the predominant pattern until a multiple forms. When a multiple forms, you target the multiple and reassess completely with your other tiles. Gather the supporting tiles for the multiple and play a category that uses most of your hands or most of your tiles. So in a nutshell, that is how or the best way to play American Mahjong, in my opinion. So let's look now at the ranges of tiles and why tile efficiency is even a thing for American Mahjong. Because in American Mahjong, we don't have what are called chows. Chow is three tiles in a sequence. And all the other games that use these tiles in Mahjong, except for American Mahjong, we don't have chows, three in a sequence. But And so those other games have far more flexibility because you can use chows. In American Mahjong, though, it's a game of multiples. And if you break down hands, I suppose you could say there's chows in there, but the way that they're designed on the card is more about single pair Pung Kong and then Quint. Now, this consecutive run category, because the number tiles are consecutive, we are able to use that tile efficiency and the, the logic and the, the agility that comes with working with tiles in a sequence. So when you are thinking about playing, let's say, a consecutive run hand, not necessarily in the consecutive run category, but throughout the card, you get to choose which number to start with. Even though the number on the card says one, you can choose to start at any number as long as your run ends at nine. So you can't go from nine all the way back to one. So let's say that you choose to start with one. You're going to be able to go from one through five because there's one hand that uses mixed suits, one through five, fourth hand down. And then you have the first hand under consecutive run, one through five and one suit. So from one, you can go up. The closer you get to the center of the run, the more efficient the tile. So when you have a two that's, that starts your run, you can go down one or you can go up four and so on. With three, you can go down two and up four. With a four, you can go down three and up four. With a five, you can go up or down four numbers either way. Five is the most efficient tile in the set. 
and then six, seven, eight, and nine, which are the opposite, the opposite side of five, it has the same range. So the, the point is the closer you get to the center of the run, the more efficiency you will have. So while you're gathering tiles, supporting the strength of your hand, think about tile efficiency. The closer you get to the center of the run, the more flexibility you will have. And that is the concept. So we're now going to talk about hand development and we're going to look at some tactics. So the first one is to optimize. This is when you target multiples. All the hands have pungs, kongs, pairs, pungs and kongs. So if you have a multiple in your hand, train your eye to go there and start there. It really simplifies decision making. If you have a multiple, tell yourself that's where we start. That's our starting point. You are here. You know those signs when you go into a mall and you have that little arrow that says you are here? That's what the multiple should do. Start with the multiple. Target the multiple. Because that will optimize hand development. Because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. Every hand on the card uses pair pung kong in some shape and pattern. So in this example, we have pair three, pair five in dots, and a pair of one bams. So clearly, we could play a little odd hand. I call little odds one, three, five. So we could do a one, three, five hand, perhaps. We even have a three crack in there and a white dragon that corresponds with the dots. So we would have lots of tiles to work with and we would be optimized because we're targeting the multiple, which is the game, the name of the game in American Mahjong. It's a game of multiples. So with these same tiles, you could play a consecutive run hand as well because we have twos, fours, and six, uh, two, four, and six. So we could do two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. For example, the second hand down under consecutive run. We even have a three crack we could use and maybe even the dragon if we get flowers. So you could play consecutive run. When you're in between categories and one of the categories is consecutive run, consider playing consecutive run because of tile efficiency. So in this case, the one bam would maybe be joker bait, which is a tactic hopefully we'll be able to talk about in a little bit. The other tactic that I want to share about is maximizing. Maximizing is a tactic that you can use if you don't have multiples. And sometimes when you get your dealt hand, you will have all single tiles, but you will always have a predominant pattern there will be a predominant pattern. I guess I shouldn't say always. Actually, I think I will say always because you have 13 tiles in your hand. It's an odd number. More likely than not, you're gonna have a predominant pattern in there somewhere. So if you look at these tiles, for example, we have three, six, nine. We have two multiples in there. So not only are we optimizing by targeting these multiples, but we're also using most of our tiles by playing a three, six, nine hand. So we would be maximizing our potential as well. When a multiple forms though, or if a new multiple forms, you wanna reassess and use the most of your multiples. So for example, let's say that we get a four dot, we would have three, four, six, no five, that would be a gap. I would stick with 369 if that were to happen. But let's say we had a five in here and we paired up with a four dot. I would switch to 3456 and let the nines go. So you want to watch the trend of the tiles coming through during the Charleston, especially because you're getting three tiles at a time. Consider those three tiles, three picks from the wall. You're just getting them at once. That's why I call it the hand development accelerator. You can transform your dealt hand. And that is the power of the Charleston. You need that power because 
after the Charleston, when he discards their first tile, you're going to slow to one pick at a time. So you go from three tiles incoming at a time down to one pick at a time. So the Charleston is very powerful part of the game. Make sure that you're focused on a category that uses most of your tiles, even with the multiples. If you optimize and maximize, you're going to set yourself up for success in a big way. The last technique or tactic is called streamlining. And that is the term I use when playing any consecutive run hand. You're streamlined. It's extreme. It's efficient because you're able to work with number tiles in three suits in a nine number range. Three suits, nine numbers. That's 27 tiles. But that's just if you think about the singles, there are four of every tile. So just the sheer number of tiles that you have to work with opens up so much more flexibility than any other type of hand. That is why cat, cat, uh, consecutive run is such a powerful category. So here we have that a three, six, nine, the three, six, nine hand right here, but you could play two through six. Now that's a little bit wide of a range in mixed suits, especially there are no mixed suit hands in a six number range or, or a five number range with this particular set of tiles it would not work so we wouldn't be able to keep all these tiles but the idea is to gather as much as many tiles as you can so that you have more options and then you whittle out the tiles that you won't need as you finally pick a hand so those are the three tactics optimize maximize and streamline so let's talk about efficiency then. We've just been dealt this hand here, two, three, four, five, six, pair three, pair five, and we have a pair of one bands. Those are the multiples. The predominant pattern is odds by one tile. We could maybe play consecutive run and there's a corresponding dragon. So with the efficiency of consecutive run, it could potentially be a better choice than odds. So let's say, for example, we pass, if this were the way we started uh, with the Charleston, it, it's not likely that you're going to have three pair, but let's just say that that's the case. And we're ready to pass something during the Charleston. Because consecutive run is so efficient and flexible and there are so many options with that nine number range in three suits, I would play consecutive run. Now, if we had a three bam instead of a three crack, I would not do that. I would play one three bam, three five dot, second hand down on the left. But we have a gap, no three bam. Because we have more tiles with consecutive run, that's where I would focus. And I would probably pass north with the probably the one bam and a nine bam, or maybe even the three crack. We could maybe do north three crack with the nine bam and pass that and focus on consecutive run because it's so much more efficient. So we're going to do some gameplay with commentary at I Love Maj. Incidentally, I am a channel member there, our channel partner. If you have not tried playing there, you can get an extra week free if you use Maj Life when you register. Use that as the promo code. You'll get an extra week for free. And we're going to go ahead and play Mahjong and we'll talk about consecutive run and when to make that choice. We may not play all consecutive run hands, but I'll point out the the options and maybe we'll even start off with a Charleston modeling where we can look at some tiles and we'll look at the predominant pattern. Of course, we'll check for multiples, but maybe we'll have options where we could play either consecutive run or another category and we'll do the Charleston two times to compare the results. It's an interesting test and you can do it if you play at I Love Maj. So let me share my screen. I do have it up, I think. Let's see. 
Here it is. Okay. I'm going to use this layout here, I think. Yeah. All right. So here's I Love Maj. They have the gameplay area at the top. This is where you play with robots and with friends, strangers. Down here is the exercise room. Then they have some excellent exercises, even a fun game that you can play that can all help you build your skills. We're going to start with Charleston practice. And we're going to do two rounds or two iterations using the same tiles. So we are starting with a pung of ones, one crack pair or pung here, one crack pung. That's a bit unusual. I very rarely pass flowers, so I would keep that. So once you identify your once you identify your multiple, then you want to look at the rest of your tiles and keep tiles to support the multiple. And in this case, we do have a lot of five, uh, four, five, six, seven in here, but we're going to target the multiple with this first round. And then we'll break up the ones and go with four, five, six, seven and compare the results. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to play a one through five hand. So I would even keep the five and even the four because that is in a range starting from the one, one, two, three, four, or even one through five, if we get the right tiles. So I would probably break up the sevens and try to pass mixed suit here. And that leaves us with maybe south with a six, seven for the next pass. So let's see what we get. All right, we have a one and a two. So now we started by optimizing, by targeting the multiple, now we're maximized because we have a range of one through four. We do have a gap, no three. That's okay, though. We're gathering. So hopefully we're going to be able to fill a gap. This is the gather stage. There's a four. So we have one four. Here's another one. I would not pass that. I would not pass one seven nine. Oops. Let's put that back there. All right. So now... We need to make a choice. You know what I just noticed that we have here? We have like numbers with ones. One, two, four, one crack. One crack. I would pass that two probably here. We have a four dot and a five crack. If we get a two, three, we could maybe play the fourth hand down under consecutive run. Okay, we've got fives. So here's a five bam, five dot. We, we want to keep going. We don't even know what hand we're playing. We have one tile to pass. Now we have to let go of our keepers. In here are all keepers. What would be ideal in here would be threes. We could play little odds maybe. But we do have a hand in here with no gaps, and that would be like numbers with ones. So I would probably break up the four and pass a five. Here's another four. So we have one, four, five. There's wins. Oh, wait, I don't want to do that. I want to keep that one because we do have some potential here for like numbers with ones. Probably what I would do here is I would pass the five because we have no three. I would focus on probably like numbers with ones. We didn't get any keepers, but we have tiles we can pass. We have a five now here, four, five, four, five, one, four, five. That's really not very helpful, uh, but we do have three tiles we can pass. So we have one more pass. Okay, we did pick up a five and we have two discards. We have a hand with no gaps and joker bait, which would be a pair you don't need. So the four dot would probably be a discard and the five crack. So we have like numbers with ones. That is a hand with no gaps. It is weak, but it is a hand with no gaps. And we have joker bait there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to play with the same tiles. 
this time, we're going to focus on consecutive run only. So we're going to hold four, five, six, seven. So let's hold five, seven, six. So now we're we're streamlining. And that's about it because we don't have a multiple and we're not using most of our tiles. So we're just streamlining here. So I would pass the one and let go of the white dragon so I'm not passing two wins. Okay, so now we have a pair of fives. Now we're going to optimize because we're going to target the five crack and then we're now even using most of our tiles. So we went from just streamlined to now optimized, maximized, and maybe streamlined. Maybe. But maybe not because we I would not pass a pair. So we have to let something go. I would probably let the four dot go because we do have a lot of five, six, seven of some kind. If we get nines, we might even be able to play a big odd hand. Okay, so we have an eight now. So we have five, six, seven, eight, and we're still maximized. Here though, we need to pass something else that we need or our keepers because I don't pass like numbers. I very rarely will do that. So with a five, seven, we really can't use that with our consecutive tiles. We need a six crack in here. So we have five, six, six, seven, eight, five, seven. This seven crack is really not very helpful unless, you know, what we could do five, six, bam, seven dot, seven crack. I think I would let the eight dot go and keep all this. So we could maybe try to play that second hand from the bottom under consecutive run. We would optimize by targeting the five crack pair. We would maximize by using most of our numbers in consecutive run. And we're streamlined by playing that second hand from the bottom. Okay, no keepers. We're going to keep going. We have tiles we can pass right there. Okay, here's a five dot. We have a lot of five, six, seven in there. Here's a nine and a two. I would not pass like numbers. I would let something go. We do have a hand in here. Let me just show it to you so you can clearly see what we have to work with. Let's see here. It would be five, six, seven, seven. Let's see. I guess we'll put that there. So five, six, bam, seven dot, seven crack. Second hand from the bottom. Because of that, I would probably let the six dot go. And then I would keep the five crack and even the five dot just to see what we get in next. So we sacrificed a six, a six dot. We picked up an eight dot. So we're still in our range of five, six, seven, eight. I would keep the eight. It came back. So now we have three tiles to pass. We picked up a six. So now we have five, six, seven. We have two discards. So let's pass two. And we ended up with two discards and a hand with no gaps, but we also have a lot of options. So do you see the difference that consecutive run can give you with that tile efficiency? That is a remarkable comparison and transformation from the dealt hand. Anybody have any comments about this? I think it's amazing. And I think this is the secret to playing American Mahjong. It is the key to playing American Mahjong. Okay, so let's exit. And we're going to go up here and play with robots. We'll play with intermediate level robots. You can play with beginners, intermediate, and advanced. So we're going to play with intermediate robots. And let's see if we can compare consecutive run options and maybe do some decision making based on tile efficiency, which is the topic for today. So train your eye to target the multiples. We have pair seven and pair eight. 
So guess what that means? That means we're going to play consecutive run. So we get a leverage tile efficiency. We do have a lot of little odds in here. And you might think, well, why not play little odds? We've got a one bam, three bam, three crack, one, three, five, and dots. Let's just say we discard those right there. We have two multiples with the seven and the eight. That's far more efficient. We could even keep that five in case we get a six. So targeting multiples is more powerful than using most of your tiles. So optimizing is better than maximizing. If you can do both, that's great. That's even ideal. But here we're optimizing. We've got two multiples. So I would sacrifice either a three or one of the ones, probably the three. So we're passing one of each suit. Okay, so now we have one, three, three. Here's a three bam pair. So this changes things a little bit. Anytime you develop a new multiple, you want to reassess. So I would sort my tiles and completely reassess. So we have a one, three bam, eight bam, nine bam, one, three crack, one dot three, five, seven. So still using most of our multiples, I would focus on seven, eight because seven eight is stronger than one three five which there is a hand we could play but we have two multiples with seven eight as opposed to only one with one three five and then i would sacrifice a tile i'd probably sacrifice the five let's see here five yeah okay now here six seven we got big numbers and we have tiles we can pass I think what I would do here is let the one go because I think we're going to end up breaking up that three bam. Now we have uh, seven dot eight bam, but we picked up the six, seven and bams. Here's a four. Oh, no, six, six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine. We can definitely keep going. We really don't even know what hand we're playing yet. In this case, because we have five discards, I would probably break up that three right now in case we get all keepers. I don't want to be stuck with a pair and either have to sacrifice a keeper or pass a pair. I really very, very rarely would do that. And in this case, we picked up a five. Here's even a four that we might be able to use four through seven, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. All of those would use most of our multiples i'd probably discard that four actually and we need to pass so we're gonna have to pass like numbers or sacrifice something we have six seven eight nine pung kong pung kong second hand down on the right i think in order to pass safely i would probably let something go we have six seven eight nine same hand on the left so probably five, six, seven, eight. We want to use the seven dot and the eight bam. So I think I would let the five dot go. And that way we could do six, seven dot, eight, nine in bams using both multiples. I think that would be the best way to go. And there's a keeper. And we have three tiles to pass. We picked up another keeper. So I would play six, seven, eight, nine, pung, kong, pung, kong. Look at the multiples in there, pair, pung, and a pair. That's fantastic. So let's see how this goes. So we we have all three tactics in here. We optimize by targeting the multiple. We're maximized now, and we're streamlined, all three. Let's see how, how far we can get. We can pung the six and kong the seven. And then we need to gather for the seven bam and the eight. Okay, we don't need wins. We're probably not going to be playing with flowers unless we get eight cracks. If we get an eight crack, we can do six, seven, eight, eight. All right, now here's a joker for grabs. We always want to keep an eye out for those. Multi, uh, the opportunities to get a joker exchange. 
There's a joker. Okay, now four crack. So we have only one discard. Technically, we don't have to pick a hand yet because we could still play six, seven, eight, nine in one suit, but we'd have to throw away a pair and a pung. So I'd say probably the nine and this, oops, not the nine, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. So probably these six, seven and bands will be discards. And we're playing six, seven, eight, nine. We don't need a one. That was going, oh, they're out now. The ones are going down. Okay, so somebody got a joker. There's an eight dot that is in our range. All these tiles are in our range here. We have all six through nine. And we're still in the in the beginning game. Actually, we just entered the middle game. 80 tiles remaining. Okay, there's a keeper. So now I would let the probably the eight dot go. And then the six and the seven. Oh, this flower, we need to let that go. So let's let the flower go. That's why we don't want to hold on to it. We need to con that. We're not ready. So we're going to need jokers, which is fine because that's a con. We can use any number of jokers to help us. All right, let's let the four go. Okay, let's let the three go. I try to discard year tiles early. Okay, that's a year tile. Okay, north we don't need. I think in the seven bam can go next. There's a joker for us. So now we're actually set. We can pung the six dot, kong the seven dot. We have our eight bam pick up pung and we're ready to kong that nine bam. We're 53 tiles remaining. So we're still in the middle game and we only have two discards. Now we have Joker bait with a six crack. I don't know if we're going to be able to see any, any Joker exchange opportunity here, but we're going to try. Nope. It's a miss. Nobody wanted either of these tiles here. Here's a keeper. Oh, that's a pung for us. Pung Kong. Pung Kong is the shape. Let's see. Nine dot was just discarded. We're in the end game, by the way. Joker. So now we're ready to win on a six dot, seven dot, or nine band. I call that a triple weight. Triple weight. There it is. Mahjong. 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 We had one, one contender or another front runner, actually, this player across from us. They're ready to win on a white dragon or a three crack. All right, so let's play again. If you have any questions, write them in chat. This is open to subscribers, so any sub subscriber can chat now. Okay, so train yourself to target multiples. We have one. Right here, three dot. So that's where we're going to start, three dot. So now with the rest of our tiles, we have a four. So three, four consecutive run. Therefore, I would hold five, six, five, six. And then I would break up these nines and dragons. So three, four, five, six. We're, let's see, five. We are optimized, maximized, and streamlined. 
there's a four and a three. Now this three, even though it is in our range of three, four, five, six, it's isolated from the five. Like we, we don't have a four BM. So the three BM is a bit isolated without a four BM with this year's card and the options we have. So I would probably pass it so that we're not passing a nine with an eight in one suit. So I would keep the nine and pass the three. So you want to try to mitigate the risk when you're passing. You want to play defensively because you're giving tiles to your opponents. Okay, no keepers there. Let's pass the one with an eight. Okay, now we have one bam seven nine one dot here. One, there is some one three five showing up. One three five, but I would rather streamline. It's much more efficient. We're gonna keep going. So now we need to we need to look at what we have here. I would not pass like numbers, and I would probably hesitate to pass a seven with a nine. One, seven, nine, that would be pretty risky. We have three, four, five, six, a hand with no gap, second hand down on the right. We could also play three, four, dot, five, six, and cracks. So we could maybe make this better by giving up a four. So we're going to sacrifice one of our keepers. And we have threes. Here's that three dot, three bam. We have tiles we can pass. One, seven, nine. Let's see here. Three bam. We could maybe make this a little bit better by passing a three bam. All right, there's a four dot. And we have tiles we can pass. We do have a two here. There's two, three, four. We even have a hand in here with no gaps. We have two, three, four, dot, five, six, one or the other, second hand down on the right under consecutive run. But we also have two, three, four, five, six, fourth hand down. We'd have to throw away a, a three dot though. I would not do that. I'd leverage the three dot pung. So I'd let the two go. Because what we want is to optimize our potential to get a five, six to help us with that second hand down. You know, we have like numbers with ones and a nine. So we have a hand with no gaps and options, five discards. So we have we have to gather. We need to we need to build actually, because we have a hand with no gaps. So all we need to do is build. Okay, so let's let the, we've got a one out there. Might as well let the ones go first. There's a three. It's in our range, so I would keep it. Anything in your range, four numbers around the multiple, keep it. Oh, there's Joker Bait. Okay, now Joker Bait, if you don't know about this, there's our Joker bait being discarded. If nobody wants that, then it's really not Joker bait. It's basically when you hold a pair you don't need, and then in the middle of the game, at around 60 tiles remaining, you see this little moniker down here, 87 tiles left. Joker bait, the sweet spot for Joker bait is 60 tiles remaining, right in the middle of the game. So we're not there yet. Nobody wanted the nine, so I would let them go. We could call that, but we have an option with a five bam. So I'd, I'd wait. And plus, it's the first one. If we play Pung Kong, Pung Kong, three, four dot, and then either one of these five sixes, we have an option, and they're all, the fives would be Pungs. So we can let this go and still be okay. Oh, and now there's a Joker exchange with an efficient tile, by the way. Let's see, five bands, since they have a pung of fives. Let's see here. 
I think I would call it because if we call it and use our joker, we can then do the joker exchange to help us with our six bam. If we ignore it, they may be playing a double pung five with fives, a hand with double pungs of fives, like the second hand from the bottom under consecutive run. Or let's see here, they could be playing the third hand from the bottom on the left. If we pass and they double pung, we're going to lose that as an option. Uh, there'll still be one more, but we're also going to leave that joker up for grabs from somebody else. So I would call it, I would pung and then do the joker exchange. And then I would dedicate or, or commit to three, four dot five, six in BAMs. We don't need a dragon. Oh, now we have Joker bait with the eight crack. So at 60 tiles remaining, we'll let one of the eights go. Let's call with a Kong. We can let that go. Okay, so 68 tiles remaining. Okay, so they're playing five, seven, seven, nine. Oh, someone got marked on. North and south with a run. Six, seven with east and west over there. Same hand. Everybody is streamlined. All right, let's play again. Okay, we have two pair, one, nine. So we're going to keep it, one, nine. We can maybe try for an odd hand. There's one with mixed mixed suits. Three, five, seven in the middle paired up right here. So let's say we look at the second hand from the bottom. It is a very specific hand. And typically I, I don't, I prefer not to pick a hand from the beginning, but it's just kind of there. And that does happen sometimes. Okay, so let's just see what happens now. Okay, we have a seven dot. Here's a seven crack. I would just keep the every option possible and still pass defensively. Okay, now here's a five. If we can get a three crack, we can play the first hand under, under odds. Now here, we're left with east and south. So this is when I would reassess this because it's a little bit risky. We have one, five, seven, nine. This would be a gap hand, first hand under odds. We have no three, but we do have a joker. And then the other hand we could potentially play would be the second or third hand, or I'm sorry, the second hand from the bottom one, nine with three, five, seven in the middle in a different suit, but we have a gap no five. Therefore, I'd break it up and let the sevens go and focus on one suit. If you have a gap, lower that as an option and go with the stronger option. There's a one and we don't know yet how we're going to use that, if we're going to use it at all. Here's tiles we can pass. So now let's reassess because we, we developed a pung of sevens in here. Probably what I would do, let's see, we have six, seven dot, five, seven, nine. Let's see here, seven, nine, five. I think I would probably break, let one of the ones go. Because if we play that first hand, we only need a pair. And then I would think about maybe playing let's say five, seven, seven, nine, that would be a gap hand too. I, I probably wouldn't give that much thought though. We need to pass. I'd break up a seven instead of passing like numbers because five, seven, seven, nine and two suits with dots and cracks. 
So we it'd be five five dot seven dot seven crack nine crack. We have no five. That's a gap. That's why I break up the seven. Okay, now here we have some consecutive run coming in. This is where I would think about optimizing and maximizing and then also streamlining. We have six, seven, eight, nine, which is far more flexible than odds. So probably what I would do here is switch to six, seven, eight, nine, and probably pass the five cracks since we have no three. That would be a gap. And I would place something with six, seven, eight, nine. We could maybe keep the five and let's say let go of the eight bam and still be able to maybe streamline with six, seven, eight, nine. No, we didn't get any keepers. Let's pass two. Yeah. Okay, we picked up another nine, not real helpful. Okay, so we could play the first odd hand or maybe some other consecutive run hand, six through nine. And we're in gather mode. We're gathering because we really mm -hmm. don't know. We need to fill a gap for odds, and we don't know what hand we'd play at the moment for consecutive run. So we have work to do. Here's a six. So now we have five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. We have a lot more five through nine. Pair seven here. I'd probably give up on the odd hand and streamline. Okay, so now we have to, we have an option here to call, but I don't even know what hand yet we're playing. So we do have a hand in here with no gap, six, seven, six, seven. So we could technically Kong that, but we still have some potential to use that nine crack. So I would let this go. I don't think the hand is strong enough to call something. Okay, now there's an eight. We have two discards before we have to pick a hand. So I would keep keep gathering. There's an eight dot. So we have seven, eight, six, seven, eight, single pair pung, seven, eight. We could do, if we get flowers, maybe we could play the second hand from the bottom, but that's a big if. That's a Kong gap. I'd love to draw an eight crack. A joker would work. We have seven, eight dot. We could do seven, eight, seven, eight. We have five, six crack, seven, eight dot. I think what I would do here is let the nine band go. So I would focus on seven, eight dot. Seven, eight, probably seven, eight, six, five, six, seven, eight, no gaps. Oops, yeah, right here. Five, six, seven, eight. And then you use the nine crack as joker bait. So let's see what happens. Five, six crack, seven, eight in dots. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. I'd probably keep the eight bam and the seven crack. Because if we get another seven, eight set in here, we could do seven, eight, seven, eight. So let's see what happens. We don't need two. Okay, three, five, bams. They're playing three, five, bam, pung, three, three, four, five, six. 3 bam, 4 bam, 5 bam, 6. Pong, Kong, Pong, Kong. Okay, here's a 7. So this is where we would maybe do 7, 8, 7, 8, but we have a gap, no 8 crack. Let's see. No, we need a nine bam. I was thinking maybe we could do single pair pung five six seven eight dot nine bam. We have an eight bam. 
there's a nine BAM right there. I think we discarded that, but it was before the hand developed to this point. So nobody wanted the eight BAM. I would let that go. Five crack. That's a keeper. So five, six, seven, eight. I would discard these right here. Seven, nine, five, six, seven, eight. And nobody wanted it, so we can let that go. We got a keeper. We could pung the five. We're set. We could pung the five, Kong the six, crack, pung the seven dot, and Kong the eight. The hand developed very quickly, and in my opinion, because it's consecutive run. It's a powerful category. Okay, let's let the seven go. There's seven, eight, nine, but I wouldn't be distracted by that. We have a hand with no gaps, so I would play it out. That's a keeper. So we're at the middle of the game, 60 tiles. We have the nine crack pair. This is when we want to let that go. Let's Kong. So now we're going to make an exposure with two jokers and I say the risk is worth it because of the level of development that we have. We are, after we Kong and discard, we'll have one discard. So we can risk a Kong with two jokers. We have a hand with no gaps and it's very strong. We're actually set. So I'm gonna Kong and throw the nine. And that was a miss for Joker B. Okay, now a red dragon was thrown. Nobody wanted it. Someone got our, our joker there. Let's see. It looks like nobody wants wins. Okay, we need five crack, eight dot. Joker will do. We're ready on a double weight, five crack or an eight dot. Okay, there's a flower joker there up for grabs. Someone got the joker <laughs> over there. Oh, five bam. We're in the end. Oh, there it is. Mahjong. Five, six, seven, eight. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. We got Mahjong. We have a two, four, six, eight hand to the right. Consecutive run uh, ahead of us or uh, across from us. And then we have a year hand to the left. All right. Let's play again. All right. Now target, target multiples. Here's a three and a five, three, five. So we could maybe play little odds, one, three, five. Look at the one, three, five we have here. But we also have three, four, five, six. We might be able to do one, two, three, four, but probably not. So... Uh, let's see. Here we go. We're going to pass. Okay, here's a one BAM. So that's another multiple. Anytime a new multiple forms, you want to reassess. And at the moment, we're right where we need to be. Probably, I would focus on little odds. So I would let the two go. Okay, now here we have a one crack pair. Here's a one dot, five, a six dot. I'd reassess. So we have one, three, five, but nothing that fits anything in that category. We also have three, four, five, six. 
we actually have a hand in here with no gaps. Three, four, five, six BAMs and dots, BAMs and dots. I would probably pass, let's see, one, three, one dot. If we can get a three dot, we could maybe play little odds, one, three, five. We have a three BAM now. Here's a, let's see, we want to keep going. We have a one, three BAM, but three, four, five, six, no gaps. So that's where I would focus. And let's see, we're passing second left. We have to pass fully. So at this point, we need to pass like numbers. That's a bit painful, but sometimes it happens and you just mitigate the risk as best you can. So let's do one, eight, seven here. Okay, so we have lots of tiles to pass. So we're going to keep going. Nine, one, nine. And then maybe we have three, four, bam, five, six in dots. Second hand down on the right. So we could probably let that six crack go. Yeah, we don't need any of these tiles here. I'll, I'll just put them together like that. Okay, here we go. Three, four, five, six, pung, kong, pung, kong. Second hand down on the right under consecutive run. There's a joker. Okay, flower. We don't need flowers. Another joker. I would probably go ahead and commit to that hand, three, four, five, six. It's got two multiples. We have a pair we don't need with the one, one, bam. If we get a three dot though, I would switch to one, three, three, five, second hand down under odds. We need a three dot. If we get a three dot before we discard these, we can switch. I would let it go because we have a gap. Here we can Kong. And because we have a hand with no gaps, I'd call. We can call. So now we need we need help with our four and that's it. It's it's a big we, we need to build. It's a big build. We might be able to get there. There goes a three dot. Oh, there's a couple jokers up for grabs. Oh, Joker of Shame. All right. We're ready to win on a four bam. Or north. If we can get a north, we can do a Joker exchange. In the middle of the game, 57 tiles remaining. Uh-oh, South, I'm going for it. I, I really didn't think they would be ready at this point, so I felt like we have a little bit of room because we're still in the middle of the game, so I didn't think they would be ready this early. I could have been wrong, though. Oh, they drew it. All right, but look, we got ready. We got ready. They have our child across from us, but there's one in the wall, two in the wall. All right, let's play again. All right, what do we have? We have a pair of nines and a pair of dragons. Well, there is an odd, I mean, a three, six, nine hand that uses opposite dragons. Let's see if we can do something there and leverage that pair of nine cracks. We could maybe do a three, six, nine hand. Let's keep three, six, nine, and then six, seven, eight, nine. 
probably the red can go since we have no flowers. Five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. I'd keep the seven. And then I would probably break out these fives here. Two, five. Okay, here's a nine bam. So we have some three, six, nine, and seven, eight, nine. All right, now here, I don't know if I would pass. I don't think I would pass a four, five, and one suit. Let's see. If we use this dragon, we actually could do three, six, nine knitted second hand from the bottom under 369, but we wouldn't be able to use the nine crack pair. So I probably would not consider that. We have some potential for consecutive run in here or maybe big odds. So I think what I would do is let the three dot go. Three, four is better than four, five. Because a five, that's the most efficient tile. Three mitigates the risk a little bit. Okay, here's a six. All right, now let's pass. Let's see. We have we have northeast, south, nine crack pair. That's what I would leverage, nine crack pair. I think we need to let the winds go. We have a hand in here with no gaps, even though it doesn't use our nine crack it uses the the white dragon which is a multiple so let's let the six crack go and the seven bam okay now we're just going to reassess with every one of these because it's just the okay now here we go this this is a better a better choice here we go three six nine using both multiples right there it's pretty weak though. Three crack, six dot, nine crack, white dragon. I would keep options. So I would probably keep three, six, nine and keep and then break up these tiles here, the five. All right. Three dot. I would keep it because it's in the category. Let's see. I guess we could pass that. There's a six. And we have tiles we can pass. There's a keeper, maybe. Nine dot. We have three tiles. I would pass these. This is a little bit risky. We have four. You might think, well, why not keep the four and the eight with the six for two, four, six, eight? I wouldn't do that because we'd have to throw away a pair of nines. So I would pass those with no two, two dot. Those two tiles are useless. Oh, and then we got a two dot. All right. We're going to discard North. I would prob probably play the knitted hand. We could pung the six and the white dragon. We need to build on our three and nine crack. Three crack. And there it goes. So. We can use jokers that we can call, we can pung, oh. and I would because it's a hand with no gaps. Look at all the three, six, nine we have. Looks like nobody wants wins. We're looking for a three crack, nine crack. We need a six dot. Okay, now over here, two bam, four bam, six crack, eight crack, pung kong, pung kong. Well, let's see, let's let this seven go. Oh, there's a joker up for grabs now. We don't need that. Okay, so four BAM is going to be a super risky discard. We need to Kong that so we're not ready. We're going to need, 
We're going to need two jokers. And there's a four ban. We're at 72 tiles remaining. I would wait. We're going to hold the four ban. We probably should just switch to defense. If somebody has three exposures and you draw a very risky tile, you might just consider folding. Plus, we need we need jokers. We need two jokers. Okay, we're at 59 tiles remaining. Welcome, Sandra. Okay, flower. That might be risky too. We're, we're still in the middle game though. Maybe we need to discard that flower because we're at 50 tiles remaining. That nine dot, we're playing three nine or three six nine cracks and, and the six dot. But we have a risky discard here. We might as well put that in there. I'm pretty sure we're playing defense at this point. We're going into the end game. These are these are the keepers, though. The four bam, that is going to be extremely risky because this player on our left, they need a four bam. And now a three crack just went down, so we need three jokers. There's one. Now, if someone, if someone discards a four bam and they don't take it, I would ditch this four crack right away. But we don't know. We don't know where the four bam is. Okay. Nobody wanted the three. Bar. There's the four bam. Let's see if they take it. Here it is. Mahjong. I kind of was thinking we had Mahjong or they're ready. I wasn't going to throw it. All right, here we go. Now we have one pair. Train your eye to target the multiple. So that's where we start. It simplifies the process. Nine crack. With a nine crack and the rest of these tiles. Maybe we could play big odds. I would probably hold the eight bam. I suppose we could hold the one. No, because that's going to require us to pass a two foreign dots. I don't think I would do that. Maybe wins will come through. I don't usually pass white dragons, but we have an eight bam and a nine crack with a south. We could maybe try for the concealed hand under wins if they come around. Let's pass 2-3 with the dragon. Okay, now here we have 8s. We have 8-9. So I would streamline and switch to 8-9 of some kind. All right, now we have to make a choice. I think I would sacrifice one of the 8s. We could still maybe do news concealed. We have an eight dot. Okay, so there's the south, and we have two tiles to pass. So we need to make a choice. Eight, nine, flower, or news concealed. Let's let that five go. That's a little bit risky here, but now we have north and an eight. So I would let that eight go. Would I pass a flower? No, I don't think so. But passing a flower versus passing like numbers. All right. I don't like passing like numbers. And I'm not going to pass a flower, not right now. Sometimes you can get away with it, but not, not often. Okay, so we're playing News Concealed. And that, that is, by the way, 
consecutive, eight, nine. So we're streamlined. We're actually optimized, maximized, and streamlined. We're concealed, though, so we're going to have to draw. There we fill the gap. I would commit. We're three away from the concealed hand. So I think that risk, the, some of those risky passes were worth it. So we need eight bam, nine crack. Okay, let's see. There's Joker bait. Two bam pair. So we have no gaps. We just need to build. And oh, there's Joker bait with a five. Okay, so it's already out though. Five dot, five bams are out too. Nobody seems to want the fives. There's a joker up for grabs now. So they're doing one, three, three, five. Wow, that was super quick. All right, well, we got pretty close here. Three discards away with Joker bait here, but nobody would have wanted the two ban. Okay, let's keep going. All right, we have, I call this a widespread. This is where you have no multiples. So what do you do? You look for the predominant pattern. One quick uh, kind of a uh, shortcut you could use is to look for like numbers. Because if you have like numbers, that is a pattern. And you can leverage it. So we have two twos, two fours, and two ones, and two nines. So one, two, that shows the predominant pattern. We have two ones and two twos, or two, two ones, two twos. We have two fours. So I would keep one through five and let the nines go. So we have more little numbers than we do big numbers. And then I would probably pass that. That's a little bit risky, though. Let's see here. I don't think I want to let the, one, uh, the white dragon go. Let's see here. We do have five, six, four, five, six dragon. Let's see. We have one, two, two, four. So I think we can stand to let go of one of these. Since the four is more efficient than a two, let's let the two go. Okay, now four dot. Now we have a multiple to work from. The eight and the nine, big numbers, they can go. We've got all little numbers, one through six. That range is too big for mixed suits. Since we have a four dot, one, two, three, four, five, one, three, five, no, let's see. Probably this four bam could go. There's five, and we have tiles we can pass. So now... Probably the one dot can go. It's isolated. We have no two dot. So I would let that go. And probably we are going to play the concealed consecutive hand. Three, four, five, six with the matching dragon, maybe. We'll just see what we get. So I would still keep consecutive numbers. The eight, the two, this one probably can go. So we have all two through six. Here's the two back. We need to pass though. We do have a hand in here with no gaps. Two, three, four, five, right there. Two, three, bam, four, five in dots. So I would keep that. No, no uh, keepers there really. Without a two dot, the one dot is useless. So I would let that go. There's a five dot. And we have two discards, but they're they are like numbers. So I, I would not hold that. So now we need to make a choice because we're gonna pass across. I'm thinking we have four, five, six, 
flower or three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, I would probably let the, the white dragon go with a one crack because we have a pung of fives. If we played the concealed hand, we'd have to throw a five dot away. So I would pass two like that. And we didn't get any keepers, but we have three discards and two hands with no gaps. Three hands with no gaps, because we could play the second hand down in one suit or two suits. And we could also play the fifth hand down on the left. So I'd say we have a pretty good chance here. Oh, look, we got the white dragon. Let's see if what happens. Some Oh, someone discarded it right there. So now we can let that go probably let that white dragon go at this point and the flower. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That doesn't really work. We have a, a pair of four dots, pung of five dots, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. We really don't have to until we till we run out of discards there's there's a defining tile i would play two, three bam four five dot that would use one two three multiples okay four i would let this dragon Four dot. We're leveraging the multiple here. Three bam, four, five. So we're one away from set. We need a two bam or a three dot or three bam in here. Two bam or three bam and we'll be set. Oh. Okay, let's see. Let's throw the four. Oh, there's a, some jokers there. Three, four. Three, four. So we do not want to hold on to these threes and fours. Okay, two crack nobody wanted. Let's see, two dot, we should let that go. We've got three, four, now this player to our right, four bam pung, four bam pung. So they're probably playing consecutive run. They have to be playing consecutive run because there are no pungs in the even category. There are no pungs of four, so they're playing consecutive run. They could be playing they could be using our three bam over here to the right. Okay, let's see. One dot is out. We're at 54 tiles. Over here, we have seven crack Kong. They're playing six, seven, eight, nine, pung, Kong, pung, Kong. So we should be fine with our tiles here. We need a keeper. No. We're in the end game. Eight dot. No, we're should be there. So that's a good discard. Okay, now that's a pung for us. We're doing two, three, four, five. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Joker. Okay, so they have a four and a six. Four, six. So they're doing four, five, six, seven, pung, kong, pung, kong. 
four, five, six, seven, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Okay, we're going to call him Pung. Okay, 4 BM right there. Nobody wants the one. All right. Oh darn, we're ready to win. We got close there, ready to win. Look at their jokers, four, four jokers. They had a gap, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven. They could have done it either, no, four, five, six, seven. So seven, bam, they had a gap, gap hand. All right, let's play again. So now we have another widespread. All right, widespread, and you can make it work. We have seven, eight, nine, two ways. Seven, eight, nine, and bams. This is where when you have a, a widespread, basically no multiples. That's the definition of a widespread. You look for multiple or you look for like numbers and then you leverage the like numbers. We have all the sevens. We have two eights and two nines. So that's seven, eight, nine. That would be the predominant pattern. So we can keep all the big numbers here. Five, really five through nine. And we have tiles we can pass. So we have a predominant pattern, seven, eight, nine, or four big odds. Okay, now we have a six. So we have five through nine, and we have tiles we can pass. That's a little bit risky there. We're looking for a multiple, though. Here's a nine crack and a five dot. So now we have to make a choice. So this is where tile efficiency comes in. We have a predominant pattern of six or five through nine, but we can't use all these tiles. We have to pass two. Because we could also place five, seven, seven, nine, big odds, I would play consecutive run instead because of tile efficiency. It's just we have far more options and it's much more efficient than five, seven, nine. So we're going to break this up a little bit. So I would probably let, let's see here, the five dot go. And then we have, let's see, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, six through nine, seven, nine, five, seven. Let's see, we have all the sevens. I'd probably let the nine crack go. So we have five through nine still. We're waiting on a multiple really is what we're looking for here to help us make the choice. Until then, we're just going to keep gathering. So let's pass the West with a three. This is a little bit risky here. I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably let the five go. Okay, now let's sort. We have five through nine. This four, it's a little low. So I'd probably let that four go. And then, so we have five, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'd let one of the fives go. Five dot, there's our first multiple, seven crack. So now that one dot can go. So we have a five and a seven. So this looks like maybe odd, big odds but maybe not let's see seven five six seven eight nine seven eight nine five seven seven nine let's see five let's let the eight go we have six seven bam five dot pair seven crack let's see five seven nine five seven nine six seven eight nine five dot okay so let's let the six bam go it looks like maybe big odds will be the way to go here somehow not sure yet how that will work but we really don't have to pick a hand yet let's see let's keep the three and let the eight go and we need to pass one more tile we have five seven seven nine i guess the three can go so we just have to make this work now Five, seven, nine of some kind. And I would just gather because we don't even know yet what we're doing. 
I was kind of trying to make the concealed hand work a bit. It's not really working. You need one, three, five in cracks or bams. Okay, now there's an eight. I would keep it. So we do have seven, eight, nine in here. And that would be more efficient. I would not call that because we don't know what we're playing. If you're not sure what you're playing yet, don't call because <laughs> you're going to paint yourself into a corner. Okay, we don't more. We're not calling anything. We're just gathering till we know what hand we're playing. Okay, now there's a three. We can maybe keep that. If we can get a one dot, we could play one, three, five, seven, nine, but we have a pung of nine dots. Let's see here. Seven, five, seven, nine. No flowers. We have no flowers. Two bands. We're just, oh, there's a flower. All right. Now we have to let something go. I think the three dot. Without one, it's useless. Okay, so now we have five, seven, nine there. We have a seven crack pair. Seven, eight, nine. We don't have to pick a hand yet. We're just going to keep gathering. Don't need a seventh. We're good. Don't need a three, although let's see. One, three, crack. Let's see here. Let's let the eight go. Kind of what I'm hoping is we can get a six bam, but there's already one out. Because we could maybe do five, six, seven, Mixu Kong's fifth hand down on the right. The other thing I was thinking is maybe get a one crack and a five crack and play the concealed hand under odds. Three dot Joker exchange. All right, now let's see. We have a nine dot Pung. We need to leverage that. I think the nine bam can go. And I think we should go for a gap hand. Play the concealed hand and leverage jokers because we have the single three, single seven, five, nine, pair, pung. Nobody wants the seven. All right. Now let's see here. There are two white dragons out. We do have a little bit of potential for the fourth hand down on the right under odds. But it's pretty unlikely because the white dragons are out. Five bam. Let's see. One bam. We've already, we threw that. And the three bam is out. I guess that would be an option for us. We can keep it. No, there's two one bams out. The one bams are all going down. I would let that go. One dot. Nope, three dots are all out. Good thing. Okay, we're going to stay concealed. So they have one, three, Pung Kong. So they must be doing Pung Kong, Pung Kong. I don't want to hold on to this five because they could be doing, so they must be doing one, three, three, five and dots and cracks, which means they probably have the three, five and cracks. I suppose we could keep it. How many one bams are out? Three one bams are out and we threw the five. That three bam probably will go, but it's an option. All the one bams are gone. Four bams. We can let that go. Oh, we got the one. Okay, now why are why am I holding on to that flower? We need to oh they got like numbers. <laughs> but look at we got close. We're playing a gap hand odds. And I believe we started with a 
widespread. So we were an underdog from the deal. All right, now let's see what we have. We have three pair in here, two, four, seven. Two, four, seven do not go together. So you, you use the most of your multiples. We have all, uh, let's see, we have two fours, four bam, four crack. We have two fives, two sixes, and a pair of seven. So the predominant pattern would be four, five, six, seven. Therefore, the two is going to get broken, broken up right there. Four, five, six, seven of some kind will break up the two. When you, you can't always use all your multiples. You want to pick a pattern or a category that uses most of your multiples. In this case, if we can get a five crack, let's say we could play four, five, six, seven and use both the four crack and the seven dot. Okay, so here's a seven. We're kind of we're looking at predominant the predominant pattern four through seven. So really the three is not helpful. Because we want to try to use this seven dot. Okay, so there's a seven crack now. Here's a one and an east. All right, now we need to sort of reassess. So we have five, four, five, six, seven of some kind. The four crack is a pair. So I think we can let the four bam go. We want to try to use that four crack. Here's an eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five through nine right there. Oh, somebody stopped the Agata, stopped the Charleston. Okay, so we have a four crack pung with six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. You know what? I would just say none. I would just wait it out and wa watch what happens. We need to discard. We have five, six, seven, and bams, four crack, pung, isolated. Then we have six through nine. I'd let the fours go. We're going to let the fours go. And we're going to focus on six through nine of some kind. Focusing more on the bigger numbers around the seven. So we're playing some, some kind of five through nine hand. We don't need little numbers. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't call anything because we don't know what hand we're playing yet. We do have a hand in here with no gaps, but I it's so weak. I would not commit to anything. There's another multiple. So we have two sevens in here now. We could maybe do seven, eight, or maybe even the six, seven pair hand if we can get flowers. Second hand down under singles and pairs. Okay, now here's a nine dot. All right, with these multiples, seven, nine, seven, we can play big odds. Five, seven, nine, big odds. Bams and dots. So R5 is with a bam. Five bam, seven bam, seven dot, nine dot. Oh, there's a multiple now. We have five through nine in there with no gaps. I probably let the cracks go. Okay. We have five through nine, one suit, first hand under consecutive run. Even though we would need a joker for the seven dot because it is out. Let's just see how this goes. We can stay concealed as long as we can, as long as possible. Okay, seven can go. No, we don't need that. You know, we're probably playing six, seven, eight, nine, or five through nine. Flower. I would not keep that at this point. We're at the middle of the game. 
And this player to the right here, Pungs of Dragons. There's a West over here. North is out. They're probably playing one White Dragon is out. I bet they're playing the Year Hand. So we don't want to hold on to Flowers. Seems like nobody wants that. Seven Bam there. Where was, oh, West. Okay, we can throw that. All right, so now we could call that for a Pung. And probably I would because of where we are in the game, 52 tiles. If we have any chance of winning, we need to commit. So I would go ahead and call for a Pung and commit to the first hand. It's a little bit risky, though, because we have only one five dot. But at least we have the nine dot paired. We could always switch to six, seven, eight, nine, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, and still use the eight as a Pung. So then I would hold the seven ban. It was discarded just a little bit ago and nobody wanted it. We're still in the middle game. Okay, now this east, this is a pair for the player on the left. Oh, year hand. They had their they had their pair. So they are playing the year hand there. We had a rough start on that one. Widespread. Okay, so let's see now. We have another well, we have a widespread with number tiles. We do have a pair of flowers for the first time today. So let's see, with the number tiles, this dragon, mm, I, let's see, we have we have two fives, two sixes, two threes. So three, four, five, six is what I would focus on. Three, four, five, six. So I would pass on the dragon. You might think maybe, why not, why not keep that for five, six dragon? I would rather optimize and pick up something else in here. One thing we could do, though, is let the three go and keep that dragon. Just in case the five, six comes in for a five, six dragon. That three crack is really not very helpful unless we were to play, a let's say, a year hand. But we have no white dragon. Okay, now here's a four. So it looks like two, three, four, five. Let's throw the two and the seven because and this red. I would not keep that red at this point. Okay, so we got the three. Now we have to make a choice. We have two through six. Since we have two sixes, I think the two dot can go. And we focus on three, four, five, six of some kind. So then I would look for isolated tiles because I would not pass two wins. The six dot is isolated and the three crack is isolated. So I would probably pass the six dot. Okay, we have a one. That really is not helpful. We picked up a pair of Souths. Okay, so wins were going around. We could turn this upside down and gather wins on the second round. Let's just see if it if it happens. We have three, four, five, six, two ways. Okay, no wins came in, but we have our first multiple with the, oops, with the four bam. So I would definitely break up the south and forget about the wins. We did get a wind in here, but we have a four bam pair here three four four five five six i suppose we can keep that but i would not pass two wins so i would probably let it go let's see four bam we do have a hand in here using the six dot four bam five crack six dot mix suit kongs let's see we could also do four five Maybe this three can go, although that three could be a three, four, five mix suit Kong. Let's let the six crack go. Okay. There we go. So now we have four, five, six mix suit Kongs using two multiples. Here's a five, six, though. 
and a seven. So let's see, we have South can go four, five, six, seven, five crack, five, four bam, five crack, six dot. We want to keep that five crack. This three dot I think can go. And with a four bam pair, we can't use a seven. So we have three tiles. And that's the whole point of that little go round. <laughs> okay, so here's a six. We have four, five, six of some kind. And I probably would not pick a hand and would not call anything yet until we run out of these discards. But we're probably playing a hand with flowers. There's an eight. We could maybe do four, four, eight addition. I actually looked down at the addition category. I wonder where Ruth is. She's always encouraging me to play in that category because <laughs> I always kind of dismiss it. It's not efficient at all. Now, here's a two. We do have some evens building in here. But we have mostly four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, two, four, four, six, eight. We have a hand in here with no gaps. So let's see here. Let's let, let's see, two, four, six, eight, fourth hand down. We have no gaps there. We can also play four bam. Five cracks, six dot, no gaps. Really, the seven crack is not helpful with a four crack and a six dot. We don't need a one bam. We have a pair of flowers. I kind of want to use the flowers. Eight dot. It looks like this hand wants to be a even hand, but we want to try to use these flowers. I would let that eight dot go. I would probably focus on four, five, six mixed Kongs. We have a ways to go. We need to build four, five, six. We could Kong one of them right here. I would. We have a hand with no gaps. Well, we might need to call on some jokers now. Oh, excellent. Misty, welcome. Flower. We don't need a Kong of flowers. Okay, let's see. Six dot. I think we better let that, that flower go right away. We only need a pair. We have a six dot Kong. Unless we switch to like numbers with sixes. How many sixes are out? There's, oh, two six cracks are out and a six bam. I was just thinking, is there a way to leverage the flowers? All of them. A flower. Oh, my goodness. I kind of hope we get a six. It'd be really nice if we can get a six crack. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Yikes. Calm down. These robots swap the Joker so dang fast. You can't even figure out what's going on sometimes. Okay, eight crack can go. We're in the end game. Another freaking flower. I think we need to probably fold, although maybe we can get a joker out of these. Apparently not. I don't think they want any flowers. Oh, there's a keeper. We're just going to let the flowers go because our five came in. Goodness. Joker. Oh, darn. Look how close we came up in just those last few picks. The Joker helped. All right, five, seven, nine, Dragon. They had our five. Oh. Okay, let's try to squeeze in one more game. We'll do a speed round. Okay, we have a pair. Train your eye to target multiples right there. Four BM. Two, three, four. That's the predominant pattern here. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. East can go seven, nine, let's say. Okay, three, three, two, three, two, three, four. We have three, four, three, four paired up right there. Three, four, two, three, two, three. We need to pass something. Since we have a three and a four, we really don't need that dragon. This is a little bit risky here. I'm kind of hoping we get a, a one. Okay, fives might help. Let's see here. Not in this case, though, because we, we gave up a six dot. Okay, so let's see. Maybe we can keep that. Oops. Okay, so we have two, three, four, bam. Two, three, four, five dot. Maybe we need to keep that. I think we should keep the fives because sixes were going around. Maybe we could swing two, three, four, five, six, fourth hand down under consecutive run. There's the six dot. That's kind of what I was hoping for. So now we have single pair pung, two, three, four, five crack, six dot. But I would still hold that five. We have three, four, five, six, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. So we have plenty of options. Okay, here we go. Okay, and no, no keepers. Oh, we got a keeper. Awesome. All right. So we have four discards and a hand with no gaps, fourth hand down under consecutive run. We need a little help with our six dot. Joker, that'll help. Two, three, four, five, six. Don't need that. We're looking for a six dot, a five dot, five crack, we're a six dot. I would love to draw. Okay, now here, here we have three, four, five, six, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. We might be able to do three, four, five, six and leverage a hand of least resistance. We can use jokers in there. Another joker will pass. We're actually closer to that single pair pung hand. Fourth one down. Five crack. One away from ready on that fourth hand down.
That's a single for us. That's a pair for us. That's a Kong. I would take it. And now we're ready, ready on a four bam or a five crack, double weight. We're good. We're looking for a four bam or a five crack. Oh, shucks. We, got, we were ready. That's, you can't get any closer than that. So they had one, three, three, five, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. We have ready to win on a four bam or a five crack in the wall. In the wall. All right, that's gonna do it. I think that's gonna do it for this live stream. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay with commentary all about tile efficiency. If you missed the first part of this live stream, we did a short presentation on tile efficiency. So be sure to watch that just for context. A consecutive run, it's a very powerful category, super efficient. You can streamline and really simplify decision making. You don't want to play consecutive run all the times, though you want to Mix it up and definitely play with the tiles that you're given, but watch for trends and leverage the trend. If it trends towards consecutive run, go for it. Any win is a good win. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the subscribers only chat. Uh, I don't recall seeing any trolls, which is one reason why we've had members only chat for quite a while. So seems like things were going okay today. We'll be back again at 4 o'clock, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time for another round of Nitty Gritty Let's Play live stream. This topic coming up is on speed to ready. This is a new topic on our recurring list of Nitty Gritty topics. If you want to know more about the Nitty Gritty schedule, Look for a link in the video description below. Thank you all for being here. Welcome to all our new members, new subscribers. Thank you so, so much. This is my little thank you to our channel members. I appreciate you supporting the channel. On Wednesday, if you don't already know, Wednesday's Obsessed Let's Play live stream. I'm pretty sure we're going to change it to members only. So fanatics, come join us on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time if you're available. And if you're not, it'll be recorded and you'll be able to watch an extra Let's Play live stream on Wednesdays. That's for members, fanatics and obsessed tier members. I appreciate the support so much. Moderators, thank you so much for helping monitor the chat. I appreciate your work and your loyalty, your willingness to be here for these live streams. All right, does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'll go ahead and log off and we'll see you again in an hour. No questions? Be sure to look for links in the video description below to learn more about how Mosh Life can serve you and help you improve your game. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.